Hello everybody and welcome to this video. It's a student exemplar on the sign of four and if you're studying the sign of four check out Mr. Bruff's guide to the sign of four £3.99 at mrbruff.com or amazon.co.uk. This is obviously a mock paper created by a teacher. It's just a very short extract. The extract will be a little bit longer than this in the exam and the question was how does Conan Doyle create excitement in this extract and in the novel as a whole? So thank you to Matthew for sending in this work. He gets a free copy of my literature and language guides. And if you send in your work, if you've done a piece of work that's got a high mark and you want it featured in a video, even if you want it featured anonymously, then email it to info at mrbruff.com. If your work is featured, you'll get free ebooks. Okay. Conan Doyle uses hyperbole to create a sense of excitement. For example, he has the construct home state, if we burn the boat we must have them. This phrase is important as it displays to the reader the extremes Holmes is prepared and willing to go. The use of the imperative must is also important as such a word infers that consequences will occur as a result of failing in their aim. The added gravity to the situation that is due to the realisation of the presence of these consequences therefore heightens the excitement as every action is now far more important. Doyle goes further than this, however. In using Holmes, the logical, rational and calculated detective, to deliver these lines, Doyle adds another layer of dramatic importance. This hyperbolic and somewhat desperate outburst is so unlike the Holmes the reader has come to know, and yet it occurs all the same, implying that even Holmes is unsure of his success, and therefore rapidly increasing the excitement. This is because, if Holmes, the cleverest construct in the text, cannot be certain, how can the reader? Doyle planned this novel to be the last home story, so the readers had no way of knowing for sure that any of the main characters were safe. So I like this opening paragraph. I think there's some nice close word analysis to begin with. Ultimately, there's a point which could very easily be turned into structure analysis that comes after that, talking about the importance of this occurring partway through the text, where what we've already established about Holmes is now you know, challenged, and that could be made a very obvious structure point. But it's nicely linked to the rest of the text. I think that makes it better than just a sort of simple language analysis paragraph. Conan Doyle also uses similes and personification to create a sense of excitement. The industrial descriptions of the boat, such as furnaces roared and like a great metallic heart, are good examples of this. The use of the verb roared connotes untamable wild animals and a later simile describes the boat as like a living thing. These descriptions connote a living, raging beast. Watson's later description of Small and Tonga on the Aurora as their quarry, a hunting term, therefore seems to create a metaphor for hunting a beast. This is, however, juxtaposed next to the industrial onomatopoeic verbs like whizzed and clanked, and this would appeal to upper-class Victorian readers who enjoyed the traditional aspects of hunting, but also the new, exciting and profitable industry and technology. The idea of hunting a beast would also appeal to most Victorian readers, regardless of social class, as due to the general racist attitudes of the time, many saw Tonga and people from British colonies as just that, a savage, inhuman beast. Therefore, for many readers, such a description would be an imagery for exciting activities, such as hunting or using new technology, and therefore would create a sense of excitement for the novel. Well, I think this is a better paragraph, isn't it? There's some really good language analysis and then structural analysis again about the structural placement of these words, the, uh, the imagery of hunting with the imagery of industry. Very impressive, that. Doyle also uses alliteration to give the extract a rhythm and faster pace. For example, Doyle has the construct Watson describe a flickering funnel of light. This alliteration quickens the pace of the extract, increasing the excitement as a result. Watson then describes where Tonga and Small are a dark blur, and this contrast could connote good and evil, implying that Tonga and Jonathan Small are bad and that Holmes and Watson are good. However, we learn later on that Small is somewhat of an honourable man, fitting in with an earlier description from Watson in Chapter 3 that all humanity flitted from the gloom into the light and so back into the gloom once more. This is a metaphor for the fact that all humans do things that are right and wrong, suggesting to the reader that it is more than just a detective and criminal, as everyone is both good and bad, 
Sherlock is a substance abuser. Watson self-deprecates. Small is a thief and killer. This creates an exciting moral dilemma for the reader as they receive both the standard idea of good and evil and also a more realistic and complex view than anyone has the potential to, that anyone has the potential to be the villain. This excites the reader as it ultimately is left up to them to make the decisions as to who the great agri treasure really belongs to and who deserves it. So this is a paragraph that really makes me think about the question and, and how it creates excitement. And the one thing missing in this answer is a strong link to the writer's ideas and themes. So, OK, all of these things are happening, but these are just fictional constructs, as the student keeps referencing. And what I want to know is what is the theme or the idea that is being presented from Doyle through these things? Now, here is a couple of interesting things to think about. If you start writing about the writer's ideas and the themes, you might think, wouldn't you drift off the topic of the question? Because if we look at the question, it is, how does Conan Doyle create excitement? But I actually think what you would do is you would be able to say something along the lines of, it's exciting because it taps into the moral debates of the time that would engage a contemporary audience, the debates about the good and evil in all mankind and all those sorts of things. So I think it could quite easily be linked to the writer's ideas and themes. Throughout the novel, Doyle continues to create excitement and tension. One simple way he does this is by having Watson describe most of his actions using the pronoun we. This pronoun immediately enables the reader to feel involved in both the main plot and the story as a whole. This can therefore mean that as Watson narrates, we get his perspective whilst also feeling a part of the events he is describing. This is important as if the reader feels involved in the story the consequences seem far more important and consequently the actions taken to avoid such a scenario are far more exciting. It's a good point. Doyle also uses pathetic fallacy as a form of foreshadowing in the text. A good example of this is when Watson, Holmes, Thaddeus and Mary arrive at Pondicherry Lodge. Doyle has the construct Watson described the sky as darkening with clouds rolling in. Within the next few pages Bartholomew Sholto is discovered dead and due to Doyle's clear foreboding weather the reader is on edge until the death is revealed, and this creates excitement as the reader anticipates something but is unsure as to what it will be. Yeah, this paragraph seems a bit rushed, and I guess that could be about the timing of the exam, but I think this would be a really good paragraph to develop about how part of the excitement is the role the reader takes, and part of that is created through the reader being able to interpret subtle clues. So it's a really good answer, and all it lacks is that strong link to the writer's ideas and themes to take the answer outside of the story and link it to Arthur Conan Doyle's reason for writing and what he's saying about society and mankind. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.